Hey guys, Fusebox, back on Brave Shadow Legends, and we're going to go over White Dryad Nia, because the Sylvan, Sylvan Watchers, uh, the Faction Wars, is going to be coming out soon, and they actually gave us some really good epics to get that three star, even if you don't have a revive, right? Ally Protection is what she brings to help get that done, but her kit does something even more unique. It's just knowing how to make it do what you want it to do. So we're going to get into, let's get into her kit. Um, let's start with the ally protection. That's what makes her protect your team. She throws it out with the small version of uh, strength. And now of all the small versions of any buff in this game, this is one you don't want to scoff at, right? 15% da damage mitigation is still a great damage mitigation. Uh, it's not the 25%. If you do bring that with somebody else on your team, it will simply overwrite this. So there's no harm, no foul. Either way, this is a great ability. And this is what drew me to her initially. But her A1, absolutely great, right? 50% chance to decrease speed as a void legendary. So you don't have to worry about weak hits or affinity. She's going to be able to keep this up in any extended fight. It's got, and on an AoE scale, keeping down speed means, yes, she will be good on Hydra, right? We'll try her out in a bunch of different places, but this interesting ability, the AI will drive you crazy with this ability, but if you do it right, it's amazing. So this removes all debuffs from any one target and then heals them for 40% of their HP. That's a really good heal. Then it resets their abilities by two cooldowns, just the same way Renegade does. It's on a single target. The issue is controlling this when you're not doing it on manual manual no problem you can reset abilities heal cleanse anybody you want uh being on a three turn cooldown as well as this being on a three turn cooldown means absolutely she can protect your team on clan boss and cleanse the stun but we want to know exactly what it takes to get this ability to land where you want it uh then she has a cool passive like if you're just using her as maybe your front man against hydra she will be healing herself the majority of the time because she's the one that's taking the most damage by soaking up through that ally protection. And when she heals herself, it splash heals everybody else for 20% of that big heal. So this can keep your team topped off as well as her healthy as she keeps ally protection up. So this is a brilliant kit, but the cool things you could do with it. So I don't have any special sets on it, right? Regeneration is great. Things like uh, continuous heal, Things like that, they do splash heal as well. When she takes that heal, they get a little bit extra heal. So you could benefit from things like that. But I'm just in a basic set with with a broken set. I've got some some uh, I've got some perception on. So I needed both resistance and accuracy to try her out in kind of everywhere in the game. I didn't want to take gear off of other heroes. She kind of feels like a baby Chris, right? But I didn't want to take Chris's gear off. So. I needed Eagle Eye. You might need Unshakable for more resistance. You you might. I mean, the speed debuff is probably not enough to take things like Oppressor, but you could take anything you want. She could even, if you've got better gear on her, you could even go into War Master if you're using her on Hydra. It's really whatever you want, but I do like that A1. I suggest getting Retribution, if not taking Deterrence as well. Getting that A1, any counterattack is going to put decreased speed out more and more often for you uh, but this is a basic defensive build here i took extra hp i took extra heals right making her heal stronger she's got lots of buffs right she's got the small version of strengthen ally protection so rapid response helps keep her turn meter moving two amazing abilities so cycle of magic's cool uh you would not want that if you're trying to like do like clan boss like we were talking I've got perception sets on, so this is great. Sniper's really solid for that A1. Uh, lasting gifts for her A3. So this is all really pretty cut and dry. It just depends on if you're if you've got good enough gear to kind of forego all this going to War Master. That's about it. So her total build is a very average build, right? Uh, she's she needs defense. She needs HP. Neither one of these are very high, so we're trying her in a very average build. Uh, she doesn't have to have both, but she really is going to benefit from not getting locked up. So we got over 300 resistance and enough accuracy to go into regular content, decrease that speed. Other than that, we want her moving fast and you do not want crit damage. I probably have more rolls than I want in my gear and you don't really need the crit rate. None, none of that really matters. Survivability, speed, and then you do want to get wherever it is your goals are for resistance and accuracy. 
So that's how we're going to try her out. So how do you control that A2? First of all, I highly suggest that we're, let's let's go into uh, we're just going to run waves. We're, we're not going to worry about bosses. You you use your imagination on how you like to beat your bosses. But if we go into any, I don't know which one's supposedly harder, uh, Ice Golem twenty five. It really doesn't matter which one we go into to deal with the waves. We're going to take an all rare team with her and just show what it is she can do. So I have. I highly suggest setting her team up. And the only reason I say that is because you want to make sure she's prioritizing this after her ally protection. The AI seems to not want to use this ability until she needs to cleanse. And that could be a problem, especially if you're relying on cooling skills down, right? So we're trying to take advantage of that really unique skill she has, cooling down skills. So in this case, we want to make sure it's her second priority. Always keep our team protected. And then come in and use this ability. Now, when unless somebody's really low HP, she's going to target whoever is in the lead. And it just so happens we're going to use Gnarlhorn to put out his provokes, which makes him take the hits so that his HP is the one that drops, as well as him being first in our turn order. So that both things that the AI look at are going to target him for the heal. Resetting his ability, allowing him to provoke again or go unkillable. His cooldowns will always be coming off of cooldown and she will keep him healed up so he almost doesn't even need the unkillable buff so we're just taking a rare team and again we're just doing waves and we might not sit through all of it because this is a super slow team it doesn't matter who's in the other positions just bring damage dealers whatever it is that you want so she throws out ally protection and the strength and buff he puts out his provoke uh maybe we should have showed this off without some you know we've got some stuns going out all the provokes are going to draw the hits. You could do this uh, with Tartura, and she's going to heal him. And then when he gets healed, the cooldowns go down, allowing him to put provoke back up. And in between, he'll just see she, she used the heal, cool down his abilities. He throws out provoke. By the time he goes back to using his unkillable, and the provokes are wearing off, again, we're keeping them slow from her A1, right? You see all these slows out there. That's her doing that job. So they're slowed down. He gets provoke out. She resets it by the time she gets around to her heal. He keeps provoke out and you cannot die. You cannot die. If you have this speed tuned and the accuracy you need on those two for anything, hard doom tower, any dungeon, that's it. It's over. The waves are done. Now, again, we're not going to beat the boss with this team. I doubt it anyway. I just want to show off how even with just a bunch of rares, you can push through all of this content with somebody like her using the really unique now in that case her hp got low enough from aoe's and having the uh ally protection out that she healed herself but you notice that topped off the entire team as well and now we're right back to we still got provoke out she'll use that ability it's all on three turn cooldowns she'll keep coming back healing him just like that decreasing the cooldowns and we're never going to have to worry about this team they're just never going to get a chance to do anything uh Gnarl horns are great a great example but it could be anybody anybody with a good provoke so you get it this is going to take forever to get through the second wave too so we're going to back out of here let's jump into arena and see if we can get something like this going in arena so again i highly suggest making a team and telling her to do what you want her to do <laughs> make sure you're in control right same thing. We just want her to go ahead and protect our team, but then go in and cleanse. And we're actually going to go for the same thing. We're going to try to use Gnarlhorn in his silly little build. And we're just going to protect our team and try to move fast. All that good stuff. And see if we can get through, right? Uh, we're, we're trying to be an annoyance, right? We didn't bring any damage here. Clearly, we could come up with something different. I just want to see, will this, can this work in Arena? It does kind of rely on us getting at least this far, right? We want the Provoke out. Uh, he does not have the kind of accuracy he really needs to get this done. But we should be watching her use her ability right there on him. So that actually worked out good. That That's something that can be difficult to control, where that's going to go. And we didn't put him in the lead. So it did work out good on that one. I don't know if, I don't know if the AI looks at abilities being off of cooldown. Really hard to say. So if we had the accuracy, we could be keeping Provoke out. 
meaning we slowly whittle this team down. Basically, right now, we're just going for being an annoyance with her ally protection in a very, very average build. So, so far, so good. Uh, we've, we've got Withered, right? Withered, she brought in the ability to protect us for one for a round or two with the uh, a bolster set. And now she's going to keep continuous heals going on everybody, keeping our defense up. So, really, we're almost down to wanting to use the unkillable buff more than anything over here. But, you know, and this is not some strong team I'm up against. This is like my first try to see can we make this work out arena. And clearly, with a strong team, we could do something. We could bring Molly in here instead of Norhorn and uh, get that accuracy up and probably do a pretty, pretty good job. Now, I don't plan on actually killing them. <laughs> That's the only issue. This is more of a defense team. So we're just we're watching it play out for a minute. And then we're going to have to back out. We're going to have to back out. And I think they're going to end up getting Noel Horn. But I don't know. She, re she reset his cooldowns. I should have told him to prioritize his unkillable. You could do this with, uh, you know, those little cheesy teams where they throw in. A, you could throw in a Paragon. Give him, get him really fast. Give him high resistance. He stays unkillable. Uh, she could pair up with somebody like that. Keep resetting abilities. In effect, making him faster and getting his unkillable up. But this is definitely holding up against a Foley, right? And we're not going to get through their revivers, nothing like that. So we're going to back out of here. So whoever whoever I'm fighting here, here's a free win. <laughs> here's a free win for you. So let me see if we can make a more serious team and actually put her to use. Here we go. This is the kind of team, like, this is a, a seriously set up speed team to come in and debuff and nuke me, right? Can we eat Trunda's hit? I really don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But if we can get... So I'm bringing in a shield set, a bolster set, and the protection of Necret. We're hoping to get him resetting his ability to put up no damage buffs because they don't have a stripper on this team. And the ally protection hopefully will help get us through like those first two rounds that are going to be kind of crucial. And will it work? I do not know. But I did set it up so that she will prioritize her heal slash cooldown ability right after she puts up ally protection. We do have to eat the first hit. And it's not going to be easy. So all we're really hoping is that she can survive. And we did make it through one Trunda hit. We got the un the no damage buff up. And now she should be, unless the cleanse makes her go after herself, she should be targeting our Helicath with her heal. Uh, helping to, But he's also got the shield, you know. So whoever she's resetting is going to help us. It's either... It, Anybody on this team resetting their abilities is a huge bonus. So now we have some damage through Helicath and the ability to completely negate damage from here on out. Like this team would be really gross, honestly, on defense. Uh, you know, there believe me, there's teams out there that could burn through the initial shield, but this could be a very nasty team on defense. Let me see if we can find uh, something else that doesn't have like the weakness here is going to be. Like, we could probably handle this. We could probably handle this one. But if there's a good Madam, if you think there's a well-built Madam Ceres, it's going to strip all those buffs off. All of a sudden, your ally protection. We're not high enough resistance. Uh, I would have to have a resist aura. And then I could probably pull it off. All right. So locking out abilities, not good. But we did survive the first wave to get that no damage buff up. No one on this team can strip. So we should get back around to putting up ally protection meaning our shields are protected, our health is protected, and then we will use our heal resetting abilities to get back to all these amazing protection abilities from everybody on this team. So this is this is a really cool. I mean, she actually has a she has a place in arena, on defense in particular. You can obviously set up an offense and get away with it. Um, but hey, she <laughs> This isn't bad at all, right? I mean, there's a lot of people working together with her, but the ability to reset cooldowns means we will always, we will always have either no damage or a shield on. Like, it's always going to happen. She just reset it again, and he'll put no damage buff back on us, and then Ninja, he can do his worst. <laughs> Between Necret and and uh, no damage buffs, and then Withered healing us up with, with Nia, there's pretty much no stopping us there. Really... She's got some neat synergies. That ability is really unique. Hydro content, it can be brutal to make. It's hard to watch. It takes forever. But if we manual, let me show you how amazing she is on manual. And she can do okay on, on, uh, 
on auto because whoever she's cooling down their skills and abilities, it's going to be somebody you brought on your Hydra team. They're going to have an ability that's worth cooling down. But what we're going for is ally protection, right? You don't have a Crisk. All right, she brings that. She's got the strength and buff. She has speed down just like Crisk on her A1, and she falls off from there. But the amazing one-of-a-kind ability that she has to actually, not only is she mitigating damage the entire fight, but we can come in, cleanse, heal, and get any ability back on command. As long as we're manualing this, anything we want. Do we need our provoke back? Cool them down. Do we want to get more debuffs out? Cool down Cantra. Do we want to get our heal and our cleanse from Ugo? Just cool her down and use it. It's absolutely one of a kind amazing. Like one of a kind amazing. Now, you know, the only issue, like I say, is who wants to sit through this entire fight while I carefully make sure we control all these heads the way we want. But we're up against two of the high, the two highest damage heads, Head of Torment and the Head of Wrath. And we're doing just fine. Now, who do we want to cool down their abilities of? If we heal ourselves, we heal the team. So that's another piece of utility she has. But we can cleanse and we can we can cleanse him, take his cooldowns down in case we need his shield or we need his uh, provoke. Either way it goes, he's ready to go. And we can make our choice as it comes around. A trundo. I've got a slow trundo. So here we don't need the provoke. We put the heal and the shield back up. With that and her ally protection, we're gonna stay safe against these nasty heads. And we and you you get it, right? So we hit auto and we're out of control. But here's that AoE speed down. We're only missing it on one head, and she does kind of have for hard, she's got low uh accuracy. So it could it could just be that, honestly. But here we can go ahead and keep ourselves healed up with Ugo. And again, any of these abilities is basically ready to go on command as long as we use that cooldown. So we've got our Provoke ready because we already cooled down Vivald and we can use that. It, she's absolutely brilliant. And, and then you do this for a couple hundred rounds and you have 100 million damage, right? It's, it's that easy. So I know you don't want to sit through it and I don't really want to go through it. And I have, you know, this is just a good team using her instead of someone like Chris or Lugan the Steadfast. She really is amazing outside of her faction. The more I use her, the more I, I mean, here we go. Protect ourselves against this next hit coming in with ally protection. And let's show her heal. Let, let's, whether we need it or not, let's show when she heals herself how great that ability can be too. Because if you're on auto, it's going to happen a lot. She takes damage by soaking damage for the rest of the team. We don't need provoke, but we'll just, we'll just land it there anyway. So let's go for it. So when her ability comes up, we'll heal ourselves. Yeah, which is what she would do on auto in this case because she's soaking that damage. She took it for everyone else. And when she heals herself, she gets a big heal and then tops off the rest of the team. So let's real quick get back around to that. Provoke's still holding good. I mean, this, this team's going to do just fine if, if we carefully manual through it. So we, we do get a bit of a heal here and a little bit of shield, but she will get her turn before we have to take any of these big hits. There's that heal. Heal herself. Big heal. Tops everyone else off. They get 20% of what she gets. Super amazing champion. So, I know. We're not going to sit through a 200 round fight. There's no point in doing it. You see what she's doing. She's absolutely amazing. Yeah, Whatever hero you like getting off, like I've got a slow Trunda. She can get her uh, big hits. That A2 that's absolutely brilliant on Hydra. She can reset it, get it back into the move, especially when I decapitate heads and I want to do big damage. Uh, maybe you're on Brutal using that Husk or that uh, Royal Guard, and you want that ability back around. She can keep dropping the cooldowns. Super amazing champion. Anyway, the, the real question then becomes, uh, let's jump into a dungeon. The real question then becomes, do you need her? I, I So because the new faction's out, I want to three start as quickly as possible. We're just going to let this run again with somebody like Narlhorn. Just watch the waves. It just becomes, do you need her? Do you need her? If you're not worried about the Sylvan Watchers faction war, then it just depends. Do you have better? There are better options out there for allied uh, protection, especially if you got some of the legendaries like Lugan the Steadfast. Absolutely amazing. Kyoku ridiculously good right uh, even Euros himself has an, a, the exact same move with the big version of strengthen but she does bring for other areas like this that really unique ability to reset abilities and keep one person completely topped off while resetting their ability to control the wave 
super unique, super fun to watch, and going to be crucial for Faction Wars. So I just want to kind of show what she can do, let you make up your mind. Do you need her? Do you want her? Uh, I'm definitely no regrets. I'm, I'm excited. I love the low cooldowns. Every one of her abilities, right down to the A1, absolutely a great ability. So there you go. That's uh, White Dryad Nia in a nutshell. If you're like me, sometimes you just like to have fun with teams like this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for your time. And until next time, enjoy the grind.